Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man back in the studio and today we're going to take a look at some of the new Eldari releases that are coming out here and some phenomenal paint jobs. Uh, if you're new to the channel make sure to like and subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar and Warcry content as well. So community painters turn the upcoming Eldari releases into a riot of color. Uh, so pre-orders for Codex Eldari go live tomorrow alongside tons of new models from the Revitalizing Guardians to the Grimmest of the Phoenix Lords. We decided to send a few advanced copies out to hobbyists from across the community to get a good lick of paint ahead of release day. The craft worlds are known for their powerful pigments and huge range of Citadel color paints. Was a full display across each of these creations. A long list of top painters submitted their work, which just goes to show how much fun the new Eldari are to build and paint. So we know for a fact Games Workshop has a very particular style of painting. So it is nice to see some of the community. Some obviously not as good. Most just different styles but good in their own right. And some absolutely phenomenal. Far superior to anything we would see from Games Workshop. Not necessarily just because of a skill gap but because of the amount of time and effort they're willing to put into them versus just regular old box art. So let's take a look. And this will really give us an idea of some of these models and what you could potentially achieve uh, with either, you know, medium, high, or amazing level skill if you possess it. So Adam R. from Siege Studios. Uh, Adam starts us off with the impossibly crisp Autark from the Eldritch Omens box set. Loaded up with deadly weapons from the huge arsenal at its disposal. Uh, so here we see the Autark with the fancy plume helm. Obviously a Bailton paint scheme uh, with a custom banner painted there. Uh, we see some pretty cool like kind of non-metallic metal. Obviously has like the fusion blaster and the spear. And we can kind of see on this kit. That looks like, like the little uh, shield that the Dire Avengers have. Nice looking model overall. Not like over the top. But you know you can look at this and say okay this is a good paint job. Nothing particularly amazing overall, just looking at it. And then when you look at the banner and the weapon, they immediately catch your eye. And I think they make the whole paint job look even better. Just because that catches your eye right away and you're like, wow, that's great. The banner catches your eye and you're like, oh, nice, good freehand right there. And then when you kind of look at the actual model, you're like, this is a great looking model. But in all actuality, this is a great, great tactic or method um, on display here where you basically pick two key things that are going to grab the attention typically like a face or a weapon or something like that and then you make those look absolutely phenomenal and then the rest of the model just by default looks so much better because those things catch your eye so great paint job definitely an amazing job bringing out those two features uh, next we have allison kersley allison warlock sports the bright yellows and blues of Ionden lining up to support her craft world's famed wraith guard spirit host um so here we see a warlock on display i think this is very clearly a paint job that anyone can achieve um, i think for the average person uh you know you could definitely paint this uh looks okay Definitely has a couple things that kind of jump out. Um, I like the spirit zones and how they've done those. A pretty simple, nice technique. Uh, we see obviously like some layering, possibly like wet blending techniques on display here. Um, overall, nice paint job. And I think what your just average, typical war gamer can expect to achieve from the new kit. Uh, nice looking kit. Nice looking model on display here. Amy Snugs. Meanwhile, this rune reading warlock cuts a regal figure with deep purple robes and gold accessories, which Amy sets against a bright green witchblade for extra contrast. So here we see a very nice demonstration of the color wheel in full effect. Obviously, the purple and green go amazingly together. We obviously have some nice dark, rich blues, almost all the way to a black. Uh, which have a very, very nice edge highlight on them. Again, we see some nice gems. The robes are very, very clean, very smooth. I like the snow base for effect as well. Uh, full on just showing off how the extra little bit of work into the base 
you can really just set your model off and obviously the white of the snow contrasts very well with the dark of the helmet and the robes and then also we see little bits of white accents on the model also a uh, very very nice looking model here the actual model itself great the paint job also great i love it killed it i mean this pose looks great if this was just a static pose and there was no other way to build this model i would say this is a great looking model the fact that you could build this or many many other versions definitely awesome nice looking base too you know i love that base uh annie dotty the black guardians of althway are a potent fighting force famed with their discipline annie's beautifully realized them here with the luminous blue faceplates and shock of brightly colored hair to contrast their dark armor. Uh, so yeah, the blue faceplates definitely stand out. Uh, we see some pink and blue hair. Um, definitely a nice set of guardians here. The black armor. You know, we obviously see pretty simple basing here. Um, and uh, overall, looks good. The white contrasts well with the dark colored armor. Kind of shows off some of the poses for the Guardians. This one's like very much running forward, throwing the grenade. Kind of like a little dash move here with the gun at the ready. This one's like preparing for battle. Oh, with the chain sword in one hand. I'm not sure if this is actually a viable build or they just did whatever they wanted. I'm pretty sure that only the leader can have a sword and a catapult. I don't know how it's going to work out, but pretty sure the chainsaws are meant to go with the pistols so maybe look at the instructions or the codex uh, before doing your personal build don't just go off some of the pictures uh, so chris frozen frozen i'm not sure chris picked out the armor of mog and Ra and one of the new dark reapers in a lighter color than their usual black showing off the incredible detail at work across their body suits uh, so a very stunning paint job here uh, so here we see, obviously, um, the black of the, like the gun is very, very dark and very rich and then highlighted with that red to give it this really nice looking color. Uh, the dark cloaks look nice. The base looks really nice. I know a lot of people hate this base and, you know, there's a lot of complaining about it. I think this nails it. He did a, a couple tufts have just made this base look phenomenal. I think that looks great. I mean, this is really just what it was missing, in my opinion. Three tufts, and the base looks amazing. It looked okay before. It looked good. Maybe a little, like, whatever. But uh, I think with these tufts, you can't argue. That's a great-looking base right there. Beautiful paint job. Absolutely love it. I like how dark it gets down in the recesses, the contrast, and then how bright the red is, as opposed to just painting, like, the portion of the gun completely red and then just having it go, like, brighter and brighter or slightly darker. Same with the skulls. Everything is black, and then it's just brought up with various shades of light. So it gives it a very, very dark, ominous look. Uh, even the parts that are like white here, they're, they're still complete black on the white. There's still complete black on the red. You know, all of it. This is great looking paint scheme. I like this. Very grim, dark looking. Uh, and then for the Reaper. Oh, that is pretty cool. Okay, so this is the Reaper launcher, and then he's reloading it. So it doesn't have like the tip on it. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I don't know if that's a conversion or that is right out of the kit, but very cool. I do like the gemstones as well. Give a nice contrast on this, the red and blue gemstones. Uh, nice looking paint jobs. Very nice looking blends. Very crisp highlights. And uh, overall, definitely like this paint scheme. scheme. Congratulations. That looks nice. Colin Ward, hailing from Colin's own craft world of Sheenashar. These warlocks join forces with a cannily converted Morgan Ra. He's used the body of Warhammer Underworld's Mirkainen to give this Phoenix Lord a tall, commanding presence. So yeah, it's a conversion. Um, the purple edge highlights on the black... Um, and it is a conversion. Not my cup of tea in particular, but interesting interpretation. For anyone that's complaining about the new model, just keep in mind, could have got this. 
<laughs> I don't want to be overly uh, critical or mean or anything, but uh, just not my cup of tea at all. Uh, yeah, so. Yep. And I don't know what, what's going on here. These warlocks join forces with the cannily converted Mogan Ra. So maybe they just decided not to show off the warlocks or miswrote that. I don't know. Uh, Crystal McAfee. Crystal's bright blue storm guardians are clearly ready for a battle with paired guardian combat weapons. Who needs pistols anyway? So instead of going with the pistols or shuriken catapults, just went with the double swords. So again, just before you go building your guardians, uh, you know, make sure that you actually build them in a usable fashion or just do whatever you want. If you don't play the game, who cares? Um, or if people just don't care. I mean, whatever. But, you know, if you want to build them correctly, don't just go off of this because I'm pretty sure you have to have a sword and a pistol or a shuriken catapult uh, with the exception of the leader, maybe different. So, uh, but here we see a couple of the faces on display. Uh, obviously, female bodies and faces. I really like this kind of like half mask thing going on right there definitely appropriate given the times i hope that that is an n95 looks legit uh and then obviously i like this very feminine looking face sometimes the faces on the elves could go either way because the bros are a little feminine or the ladies are not quite as feminine uh this is a nice face right here uh, if you're definitely going for the female elf you don't have to just look for the belly button and the chest plate you can tell right from the face so uh, nice looking. Cool little paint scheme. Dark bases so that the models stand out. That's definitely a technique. You know, just go super dark and super plain on the bases. I mean, a lot of stuff on here. They're busy, but they're not like bright and colorful so much that it takes away from the model. It actually does the opposite. It really accents the brightness of the model. So I love seeing people's different techniques, skill levels, etc. So uh, Emma Durant. Emma found time to finish an entire squad of Bone White Storm Guardians from her custom craft world, Aestheria Honoris, to fight alongside her flame-kissed warlock. So here we see, obviously, a squad of guardians, uh, five and five. So we see some power weapons galore, a couple of uh, chain swords, a couple fusions, a uh, nice looking paint job here. I really like the bone armor, white, and then a nice little accent with the either purple hair or that blue, uh, you know, ponytail kind of thing going on. A little darkness from the weapons. Looks nice. Definitely a nice paint job. Quality paint scheme. And then again, we see just another diverse kind of bases. These are kind of grassy with a little like accent tuft or a little alien looking tuft on some of them. Nice paint job. Cool scheme. I like it. Seeing quite a bit of pink or purple and blue hair. So apparently that's a thing in modeling as well. Uh, Hendarian. Golden Demon winner Hendarian blew our expectations out of the water with his incredible Baelton Guardian and Warlock. Then, for good measure, he demonstrated how colored glare can really spruce up black armor on a dark reaper. So here we see by far the best paint job we've seen yet. Uh, the basing has some cool cracked desert effects. We see some little mini cacti as well. Uh, I'm not sure if those are 3D printed or what, but very, very cool basing. Uh, definitely fully shows like the desert theme. No question in anyone's mind. Uh, but more importantly, the paint jobs on these are absolutely stunning. Uh, this is as good as it gets, in my opinion. I love the style. Uh, I love the, I mean, everything about these is just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. The non-metallic metal and just the way the armor is done, the way the cloth material is done, just absolutely stunning. The freehand uh, white on the already white robe is absolutely stunning. You often see like the green freehanded onto the white or the white freehanded onto the green or black on white or black on green uh, you very rarely see this or almost never see this that that is absolutely stunning phenomenal paint jobs i mean and then obviously the non-metallic metal of like the gold the gems everything about these is just absolutely stunning beautiful paint jobs 
Uh, and here we see a guardian again with a chain sword and a power sword. And blue hair. I must have just missed something. That just must be the thing now. Uh, and then for the Dark Reaper, obviously fully capturing the black armor and then different light sources. So we see like the cool blue on one side and the orange or red uh, on the other side. Seems like it's maybe missing a little bit on the weapon. I don't know if you just got tired of doing it or ran out of time. But overall, absolutely beautiful. Definitely interesting. I don't. It is an interesting thing. Because if this was supposed to be like OSL lighting or something like that, you would think it would still be somehow reflected on the bone shoulder pad uh, in the weapon, but we don't really see that. So probably just kind of showing off some techniques. Absolutely phenomenal though. Beautiful models. Phenomenal painter, obviously. Golden Demon winner, so no question there. Uh, Jack Hunter is next. Continuing the bright theme, Jack's Mimera Guardians look magnificent in hue-shifting teal and blue armor which makes their black helms really pop, though the red dirt is scuffing up their boots like nobody's business. Uh, so here we see some pretty simple basing, but we see, uh, you know, this is a cool technique that we see where people will basically have some of the basing texture uh, onto the actual models themselves. So it looks like they're interacting with this real world as opposed to just being like fully clean armor and then, you know, they're running around in like dirt. So definitely like that. Uh, some little like tough accents on the bases, but overall pretty simple. Uh, the blue armor looks okay. A little something different. Uh, and the black helmets, obviously. Nice little accent color there with some metallics on the weapons. And then, of course, we see like the little red for the uh, little uh, top knots. Yeah, it looks good. I wonder if that, is that a thing where you can just take this many power weapons now inside the squad? I uh, would definitely seeing like squads of like five power weapons out of ten and then a bunch of chain swords. So uh, that would be pretty cool. Probably up the damage output of Guardians in combat. So James Collard is next. James also leans towards the bright end of the palette with a craft world Yumlock scheme. So vivid it seems to glow with an inner light. Um, so we see a pretty flat gray with some nice orange accents to it. Uh, desert base. And a cool little like strip with some accents on there. The blue and orange definitely look good over the gray. Uh, you know, this is crisp, simple, but looks nice. James Otega from Siege Studios. We're going back to Althway with James's Warlock whose bright yellow mask stands out against the somber black robes. So very nice looking Ulthway Guardian. Obviously the yellow pops and draws attention to his face. We see again, uh, you know, extra attention being used on the actual sword for like a non-metallic metal style. Uh, and then, you know, you can basically just make the sword look really nice and then everything else looks good. But, uh, you know, nothing too over the top right here. I do like the technique that he has used on the leather. Uh, intentionally kind of putting like some edge kind of scuffs and rough areas a little bit uh, to make it look more realistic like the leather is kind of beat and scratched and been battled uh, so definitely a nice little technique right there uh, to achieve essentially like different fabric or material looks uh, the yellow is obviously nice and bright overall nice looking model again the base on this I like it looks good it's got the built-in you know tactical rock or tactical ruin and then a little bit of uh, you know just a couple little materials added on with the tuft, and it looks very nice. Next, we have Matthew Harrington. Matthew managed to paint up the lion's share of tomorrow's releases in an orange color scheme that you couldn't miss on a moonless night. It's a rare moment of brightness for Morgan Ra, too, who's clearly trying to fit in with his new comrades. So here we see, obviously, an orange paint scheme, a little bit of everything. We see a bunch of guardians. We see a couple of Warlocks, obviously Mog and Ra, and then some Reapers as well. Uh, very nice looking paint jobs. Wish we could zoom in a little bit here. You can tell that there is some nice blending going on here. And these are very, very nice looking models. Uh, the orange is definitely something different. The white and the uh, kind of like faded purple go well with it as well. Uh, and then the darkness of the bases with a little bit of grass on them 
definitely accents the kind of uh, contrast between the bases and the models. So again, you don't get drawn to the bases because they're like a darker color. You're immediately drawn to the brightness of the models. Then you kind of like shift around and notice the bases and see some of like the cool effects and everything going on. Very, very nice. And again, the Morgan Raw base looks great here. Um, you know, again, I know there's been a lot of people who are like, oh, why is he doing the splits on top of ruins? But here we see with just a couple of tufts and a little bit of basing material uh, that this looks absolutely great. Um, beautiful. Really, really like it. Have not been able to identify yet if there's more weapons than we have initially seen. We know there's like the open hand and the sword for the warlocks. We know there's the spear and the pistol, but have not noticed. You know, I know there's some speculation that there would be multiple of each. I uh, have not really seen that so far. It looks like so far you're basically getting like minimal options. Uh, so Meg Harkness is next. The sinister Phoenix Lord of the Dark Reapers returns to his iconic, mournful appearance under Meg's brush, looking suitably spooky in black robes and worn bone. So here we see a more traditional Morgan Ra. Uh, again, just a little bit of extra basing added on here. Uh, we see the purple for the undertone here. Uh, we see like a little bit more of like blues and greens inside the armor. And then, uh, you know, more of a like kind of black for the actual outside of the cloth. Uh, a little different technique on the bone here as well. And, uh, you know, a little plume kind of matching that kind of pinkish purple look. Uh, overall, looks good. And then we see a contrasting like green for the spirit stones with a little red action as well. A little something different here. Miko Loma. Nico's Samhan Eldari show off the craft world's distinctive red uniforms, which are a great way to start your own force using the handy guides on citadelcolor.com. So here we see some interesting red armor. Uh, overall, pretty simple here. Uh, looks like the tactical rock has been replaced with some actual rock or something resembling it. Uh, we can see this little basing technique. Looks nice, pretty simple. Little like grass and tuft action going on here. Uh, if you don't like the overall look of the bases that came from the set, you can easily create your own. Uh, I do like that they added some of that on there. A lot of people don't make special bases or enjoy making bases, so they're just going to use what comes in the kit. So I like that it adds a little something to the bases. Uh, overall, looks nice. Nice little different look here. little free-handed stripe at the bottom. I'm not sure. It looks like a decal right there. Uh, overall, cool little look. The white and red contrast nicely and the bases look pretty cool. Nick Lamborn from Siege Studios. Branching out into one of the craftier craft worlds. Nick's painted his phenomenal warlock in the supposedly sneaky aleotic scheme. Uh, we can see only assume we can only assume the blue and yellow dazzles their opponents. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like the same Warlocks over and over again. Obviously, the helmets are the main thing you can change, and then just swap in the arms. They look nice. They're not bad or anything. Uh, but I was hoping that there would be a couple more options that we're really not seeing. Uh, definitely a different look here. Uh, nice overall paint job. Nice little basing, the blend of, like, the ruins that come in the set. Uh, and then, you know, just a little bit of own basing added in there. Smooth paint job. Peter Harrison is next. Peter combined elements of the Storm Guardian kit with the Lumineth Realm Lord's body to give his Eldari an ornate robed outfit, perfect for someone aspiring to the path of the seer. So here we see a conversion using a Lumineth Realm Lord's body uh, with the pistol hand and sword hand, as well as the head from a guardian. Very cool. Nice conversion. Uh, the parts go together very nicely. Fit the overall aesthetic of the Eldar you know definitely a little different obviously but that is clearly what this person was going for I like it the paint job looks nice a little different you know different basing technique overall cool conversion right here definitely something different but just showing you how you can kind of think outside the box maybe put some old kits that you have uh, to work here as uh, you know maybe you buy a guardian squad and you have a bunch of lumineth just laying around uh, you could very easily have extra weapons and heads from your guardian kit and maybe a little clip or whatever so you can turn your 10 guardians into 15 or 20 pretty easily with a couple of lumineth bodies cool little conversion richard gray is next have you ever seen a dark reaper look so rich and shiny we hadn't until richard's paint scheme 
Sorcery gave this new model a staggering chrome finish. All right, so here we see a Dark Reaper Exarch with a non-metallic metal technique. Uh, every bit of this model looks absolutely stunning. Uh, everything down to the actual basing itself. Uh, the base itself is very creative, very cool, and fits the overall aesthetic. But the non-metallic metal here is in full effect. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we can see the reflection of various colors off of various bits. So here we have like the silvery bits reflecting the color of the gun, the red of like the armor. And then again here we see the metal, uh, like silver of the actual like missiles themselves reflecting off the color of the ground. Absolutely beautiful, phenomenal, and could not have been executed better. Um, this is absolutely a beautiful model. Full on non-metallic metal to a T, uh, done extremely well. Very, very nice. Very nice. And just showing you like that, you know, you can make any model look phenomenal. I mean, you're not going to see this on Games Workshop art. And to anyone that doesn't like the models or says that they look too cartoony or not detailed enough or whatever, look at this model and tell me that this is not absolutely beautiful. I mean, the face is absolutely stunning. The way the teeth are done, you know, the eyes, everything. I mean, the skull on the shoulder. This is this is absolutely phenomenal. Top notch. Beautiful. Congratulations, sir. Stali from the Tale of Painters. The Black Guardians of Ulthway are back with an attendant warlock, this time decked out in bright yellow details to shine against the darkness of the crisp armor and robes. Also, that is one fine crest on the warlock's helmet. So, can't really see the crest that well, uh, but definitely has a cool little color change thing going on there. Got the Dire Avengers kind of, uh, you know, every other little bit. Nice black armor, very crisp. Nice little blue accents for the, uh, you know, little cloth tied on their arms there. And then obviously like the ammunition, grenades, sheath, everything. Uh, great looking models. I really like these new Guardians. They look phenomenal. The face mask, again, looking stunning. Uh, I like the male-female thing. I know people are complaining about like the abs versus like the belly button. I don't even know that I would have noticed that or cared. Um, I really just don't care. I think too, too many people are just too focused on this, that, and the other. Should the girls have abs too and not have a belly button? Should the guys have a belly button and still have abs? Should they all have abs or all have belly buttons? I don't know and I don't care. Uh, I like that there are female and male models. I like that there are female and male faces. And I like that when a lot of these models are in armor, maybe not so much on the Eldar, uh, but you know maybe on like the uh, Warlocks or whatever models, that you could have a unisex model that clearly looks like a female if you put a female head, clearly looks like a male if you put a male head, or you can put on a helmet and no one would ever know the difference. I like it. I like that there are nice represented male and female models in the range. I know some people don't care. Some people really care. I fall right smack in the middle. I like the diversity. Very, very nice paint jobs on these. You know, nice and simple, but also clear, detailed, nice edge highlights. You know, some nice uh, transitions in the colors. I like how the leather and everything looks here. Beautiful models. You can't really see the spear that well. I would love to see this Warlock from a different angle. I have a feeling this model looks better than we're able to see because I think this crest would really bring out the colors with the yellow and orange or yellow and red, orange and red, whatever it is. And then also... This spear looks like it's very detailed and we just can't quite see it. I think if he was turned like 15 to 30 degrees uh, in one direction or the other, we would get a much better picture of this model. Uh, very nice looking though. Simple bases, but look good. And then Vince Venturella. Warhammer Community regular Vince picked up a fistful of bright paints for his Warlock using a classic combination of blue and orange and harkens back to his beautiful tiger-striped Beast Boss from last year's orc releases uh, looks nice obviously the contrast between the like baby blue and the orange looking good you can see some very clear you know wet blending taking place on this model some interesting basing and little tuft additions you know different look here different style at work to each his own for sure 
Do you have an Eldari Warhouse ready to dive into a crusade against a great enemy? Show it off at the Warhammer 40k Facebook page and make sure you come back tomorrow as Codex Eldari and the first wave of new models arrive for pre-order. So there we have our models for today. A uh, cool little article showing off some of these paint jobs. These definitely look nice. I really like the black. This is by far the best paint job out of any of these in my opinion. Phenomenal non-metallic metal. Amazingly executed. Cool conversion. Definitely like the look of that one. And then we see a couple of other just, you know, more traditional kind of different ways, different styles, all different skill levels, color schemes, very nice looking models in general. Definitely showing off some diversity, everything from, you know, beginner level paint jobs to just absolutely stunning. I mean, these again are great looking models as well. By far, these are the best with the exception of that metallic uh, Reaper we saw down below. Uh, these paint jobs are absolutely freaking stunning, beautiful, well executed, uh, very, very nice, very, very nice. This pro has got the double spears too. I did not notice that before. Uh, definitely interesting. So I want to see what his other uh, warlock looks like. I guess he could have like double pistols or the hand in the pistol or maybe the hand in the sword. Uh, oh, okay. So wait, does that mean we're getting two spears, a left and a right hand spear? Hang on a minute here. Did we just pick up on something? So if this is correct, there's a left and a right spear. So maybe there's a left and a right sword for the Warlock as well. And we do have more options. Interesting. Or that could be from the Altar kit. That may actually be the spear from the Altar kit. I don't know. I don't know yet. I'm not sure. Nice looking guardians here. I like the armor. Definitely some interesting ones. That is an interesting conversion. Very nice looking paint jobs here. I really like the very, very dark down in the shadows, uh, but brighter on the edges. Nice little technique. Nice contrast on the faces there. This is very rich. Nice contrast off the snow base. Yep, overall, some nice paint jobs. Cool little article right here. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the paint jobs, let me know down below which one you like the best. You know, what style, uh, you know, what are you going to paint your army with? Are you excited about these releases? What models can't you wait to get your hands on? Did you think the conversions were pretty cool? Uh, do you like them? Do you not like them? Is there a particular model that's your favorite? Uh, but uh, if you enjoyed the article today on the uh, little review or walkthrough, make sure to like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Obviously, we do everything from Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and War Guy content as well. Everything from showing off our commissions as we leave the studio to like reaction and review articles, unboxings, and then of course lots of tutorials for how to paint, how to convert, model, uh, you know, basically magnetization, lighting, pretty much anything for your tabletop gaming needs. That's it for today. I'm Warhammer Man. This is Warhammer Man Studios, and I'm out of here.